I think of retreats as doing our meditation practice of doing this 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 quiet um, inward process. But what often gets left out is how hard it is, physically hard, emotionally hard, spiritually hard. It's a challenge to meet ourselves on the cushion. There's a reason we turn away from ourselves. There's a reason we create this false front to meet the world with so we don't have to show the things, all those things that Clinton talked about that maybe we're not so proud of. But when we're sitting on the cushion, as Clinton pointed out, it just starts coming and we have to be with it. And that's hard. Some people are also, in, in terms of the physical effort, some folks who practice Zen are kind of fortunate. They like to meditate. Their body is subtle, supple enough to handle the intensity of the difficulty of sitting in one place and not moving, of, of doing the physicality of it. But someone like me, and I'm sure lots of others on, on Zoom here tonight, it's hard. Your back hurts, your butt hurts, my hips hurt. Sometimes the knees hurt, the back hurts. And yet you have to, once you put yourself in the context of the retreat, you have to work with that. You can't, there's nothing to distract you from. And that's hard work. When I was thinking about this, I thought of this example that I, I've shared a few times. I happened to look up, maybe I said this in a talk a few weeks ago, but I happened to, I knew it was an old friend of mine's birthday, and he had moved into the Zen Center on the same day that I did after a seven-day retreat in June of 1979. And I've looked him up before and hadn't been able to find him. And this time I looked him up and what I found was his obituary. So his time had passed. But I remembered when we moved into the Zen Center together, he was struggling to end his alcoholism. And his body was ravaged by the life that he had lived in the 60s and, and, and 70s. And those of us old enough to remember that understand what that means. And here he moves into the Zen Center, and the first thing we do after waking up every morning is 108 prostrations. He couldn't do one. But because he lived at the Zen Center, he had no choice. We used to, The bell would go off if, in those days. If you didn't get up for practice, the head Dharma teacher came into your room and pulled the covers off of you. And, and essentially dragged you down to practice. There was some young guy who was living in the Sangha, and he figured out, he found the stairway up, the, the little ladder in a closet up to the attic, and he would hide out in the attic. Hardly worth it. You were already up, but leaving that aside. But this man, every morning, came to practice. Day after day, week after week, and I don't remember how long it was, but let's say six, seven months in, suddenly he could do 108 prostrations. He never in a million years believed it would be possible that he could do that. Without the effort, it never would have happened. I think it's really under-recognized the importance and the value of the effort we put in, the physical, emotional, and spiritual effort that we put into practice to actually do it. So if that effort brings some trepidation, just also hear that the flip side of that is what comes out of that physical effort, what comes out of that emotional effort we find that we're not what we think we are. And in some ways, that's 
the basic awakening of Zen. We find out who we thought we were is not who we really are. And generally, who we think we are is a much more limited and truncated version of who we really can be.